Welcome to Longmont Public Media's Conversation with the Candidates. I'm Richard Lyons, and I'm here today with Greg Harris, one of the three candidates for mayor. Welcome, Greg. Hello, Dick. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Greg, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself so Longmont voters can get to know you a little better. Sure. I've lived in Longmont over 50 years, been married over 32 years. I have two sons. Uh, they both graduated from CU. They went to Front Range Community College, which is a wonderful college in Longmont. And then they went to CU for their bachelor's. So they had associates, then bachelor's. Oldest one is married. Uh, he graduated two years ago, got married, uh, moved to Seattle. Uh, the youngest one just graduated a couple months ago from CU. So he's planning on either teaching Japanese in Japan or maybe moving to Canada. Right? Really? But yeah. They're, they're anchored in Longmont, which is a wonderful, wonderful town, as you know. But, you know, it's time to, to grow up and be their own man. So, you know, uh, me and their mother will miss them dearly. But anybody with a family knows that's how it has to be. So uh, I'm 60 years old, just turned 60. Uh, I was a maintenance man uh, recently, you know, the last few years. But mostly I... I Grew up doing construction, like everybody else. Moved here in 1970 with my family. Uh, I have five, five brothers, two sisters. Uh, my father died years ago. Mother's still alive, lives in uh, just outside of Boulder. Hmm. I, uh, let's see, uh, I have had many jobs, which is when you finally get to the end of your construction career, you turn into a maintenance man. <laughs> so I've been serving the last 20 years, the public, you know, the church, uh, I do many things. I still, you know, uh, uh, we take meals to seniors, you know, uh, um, every other day or so, you know, help out, uh, snow plow the neighborhood when it snows, you mm. know, help take care of their house when a fixture or something breaks, you, you know, I go over there and take care of that, you know, uh, help them with their cars, stuff like that. Just, just things you help around the neighborhood to, to keep your neighborhoods, you know, functioning good and take care of our seniors. Yeah, so. that's great. What is the one thing that you want the voters to know about you? Uh, that I, I love Longmont so much, I, I think that we can really fix it. I think it's going in the wrong direction right now. And I think uh, it's had a great leader, but it needs another great leader to get things done. There's so many things that need to be fixed. Uh, we have no, uh, let's see, there, there's no mid-income family housing, you know, and, and, you know, we all know that the upper uh, higher end jobs are created by tech companies and stuff like that. And the middle income families have no no housing, attainable housing in the, uh, let's see, uh, inventory or development. Uh, so how do you get these people into town to take care of that? Well, they're all commuting from out of town, which creates a, a great deal of pollution. You know, if they were living here, you get that tax base. So I see things like that that, that need to be changed. And, and you know, I want to change it. So uh, being someone who fixes things and gets things done very quickly, I think I can add to the, the, the Longmont, you know, political scene. Very good. I think you explained this, but I uh, want to ask you again, what, what brought you to, the Long, to Longmont in 1970? Was it with your family move here? Yeah, we were in Chicago and uh, uh, it was getting bad, which is kind of funny when you say that now with the way it is. But it was getting bad in 1970, so my father, who worked at IBM at the time, moved us all to Colorado. So, Very good. And what do you especially like and don't like about Longmont? I love the small town feel. And even though it's grown, you know, geez, back in 1970, there was maybe less than half of us here. You know, now it's almost 99,000. And it still has that wonderful small town feel. And I think... Longmont can still build. Longmont's going to grow no matter what anybody else does. It's a great town and people want to live here. Uh, it just needs help, you know, growing responsibly. You know, our infrastructure hasn't grown at all. But, you know, uh, we're, we're tons of affordable housing, but you don't see any middle income housing. So how, how do you get the workforce in here? And if you train them and they live outside of town, you know, what are they going to do? Are they going to keep commuting for three hours on the road, bumper to bumper? Or are they going to find a job closer to home once you've trained them? And that then that is a detriment to the, the businesses because businesses can't find employees, let alone if you train them, you can't keep them. Yeah, so. yeah that's a good point. Let's uh, assume that you are elected to mm -hmm. city council. The mayor is part of the city council. Mm -hmm. um, let's assume that the city received a million dollar grant. 
with no strings attached uh, to use in any way that the council so choose. Uh, what would you do with it and why? Well, I would like to, uh, well, the million dollar grant, that's, I want to get my hands on that infrastructure if it comes through. And I would like to expand on Highway 66. You know, back in 57, they moved the fences back to expand that road and it was never done. And probably that money's gone. Just like the train in 2004, when, you know, taxpayers gave like $150 million or so for the train that never came and that money's gone. So if I could, I'd like to expand 66 so we don't have bumper to bumper traffic that would take care of many problems. One, the commuting, uh, two, you know, pollution, uh, mm -hmm. as well as people can spend more time with their families instead of an extra three or four hours on the road. Um, I would like to see the, the city needs to, it, it's expanding greatly, but it needs to start maybe growing up, upwards. You know, uh, when you see a little parking lot, maybe over there by the Civic Center, you know, maybe that thing could be raised to a three or four level. So, you know, when we have gatherings, people can actually park in town instead of, you know, fighting for parking spaces and stuff. Uh, uh, I'd like to see, uh, you know, especially attainable housing, do something to get the construction crews in here, uh, you know, developers, so that, you know, some kind of incentives so that they can keep building uh, attainable housing. Because mm -hmm. like I said, we have none. And how do you bring businesses into Longmont if they don't have a place for their employees? So. That's where I'd start. Okay. Greg, did you have a person that was your mentor or someone that influenced you um, and helped you along your way? I think every employer I ever worked for, the best influences in the world. Uh, I, you know, serve in the Catholic Church for many years. I have many priests that are deacons, are wonderful men. Uh, all the businesses in construction, there's, there's nothing harder than a, a construction uh, owner. You know, they, they have to work for themselves, plus they have to train you. I think construction is underrated, you know. A lot of realtors, uh, just, I have so many friends, professionals, I think each and every one added to it, so. Very good. Are you um, paying it forward? Uh, do you have, are you mentoring or influencing some young person's career or life? Uh, whenever I get a chance to, yeah. Uh, I say every day is a mentorship for people and stuff. If, if you're kind to someone, you know, and, and help them, you know, I think that that does a great deal, you know, reaching out. Uh, like I said, I do a lot of volunteer work. And when you do that, other people see that. So, you know, you lead by example. Colorado and Longmont have many recreational opportunities. Uh, which do you uh, enjoy and how do you spend your leisure time? Uh, I love spending it with family. You know, I always say God, family, work, and everything else after that. So, you know, I, I like to walk around the neighborhood, uh, meet all the neighbors. That's one way to really take care of your neighborhood. If everybody knows everybody else, you can kind of keep the crime out and the riffraff. Uh, vandalism, you know, you're always going to have that. I see it popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. Graffiti's popping up more and more lately. But, you know, if you... I, I like riding bikes with my family. I like walking my dog. I used to train service dogs and give them away because mm. those are, they're very expensive. I mean, uh, uh, just a basic service dog is $14,000. Really? And you don't meet very many, yeah, and the, the more expensive are around 40,000 or above. So and you don't meet very many handicapped people that just, you know, have big fat wallets. So, you know, anytime, anytime you can do something in kind and have fun while you're doing it, you can't beat that. That's true. Um, looks like Longmont, at least from the latest map, um, will switch from the fourth U.S. congressional district to the second. What impact, if any, do you think that will have on Longmont? I wish I could answer that. I don't have enough information on that to, to give you an intelligent answer on that. So. Okay, fair enough. So how do you learn and stay informed about local, state, and national issues? Well, like most people, I watch many news channels. Uh, you pick up a paper here and there, you know, the, uh, the main Times Call, the Denver Post, I think it is, and the Daily Camera, they're all owned by the same conglomerate. So, you know, if you pick up one, you can pretty much get the gist of all three, all three and stuff. So that, and you know, stay in, in tune, you know, I, I'm a people person, I like to talk to people. And you know, you can always hear different things from everyone else. Uh, Sirius Radio, you can get every channel in the world on that, so you can listen to a lot of things, yep. and then public television, of course. So, um, Greg, national politics, as you know, are very divisive in our federal and now our state uh, governments. 
Although the city council is supposed to be nonpartisan, some say it's becoming more political. Uh, what would you do to keep the divisiveness from uh, occurring at Longmont City Council? Well, I definitely would favor some of the new people running for city council. There's Talis, there's Jeremy, there's Diane Christ. Uh, there's three really good uh, balances that should go into the council, I think. Uh, I think they're wonderful people, and I think they do a good job for it. Also, I think with a, a good leadership, which is what is something I'd like to provide as mayor, um, I think we could bring this uh, into balance more. I mean, they just passed an ordinance last night that I, I, I didn't think was in the best interest of Longmont. It takes itself and inserts itself between parents and the children, and I think that's the wrong direction right off the bat. So if you were elected, uh, how do you plan on involving residents more in the decision-making uh, for our city? Well, I think reaching out before they do things. Uh, last night at the city council meeting, it, it seemed like they didn't reach out to any of the restaurants. They named merely a couple, and I know Longmont has a great deal of restaurants in it and a great deal of business owners, and none of them knew what was going on from what, you know, uh, talking to a lot of them over the last few months no one had an idea what was going on. So I didn't think they reached out to anybody. I think it was a, a, a left block, you know, just stopping everybody from uh, hearing about it, trying to push it through quickly. Uh, I mean, you could hear the answer from the city council, half of them, before they even listened to the public speak. And I didn't think that was right. So if you could change one thing in the current Longmont Municipal Code, what would it be and why? I would change whatever keeps attainable housing. Something's blocking it. I don't know what it is. They asked for a report. There was a motion passed to ask for a report, an annual report on all projects that were under development. And it, it, it ended up being uh, just affordable. They wanted a report on affordable housing instead of everything. I'm requiring a quarterly report from the staff on what's going on with the projects in development. So uh, things aren't at a, a standstill, you know, static. Well, Greg, I think I, I uh, heard you mention um, attainable housing uh, several times in our Correct. interview. Um, between affordable housing and attainable housing, uh, which do you prioritize as being the greater need facing the city of Longmont now? definitely attainable housing. Like I said, there's nothing in inventory, nothing in development. So where do you move? How does anyone move up? I, I mean, we have plenty of affordable. I'm lower income. I love affordable housing. You know, I think it's a great thing. And we're totally focused on just that. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a well-rounded city unless you include all three, you know, upper, middle, and lower classes. So, Thank you. Greg, that uh, concludes our conversation. I. Um... Thank you for your participation here today and wish you luck in your campaign. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. Thank you.